What's up everyone, Clueless Bushcraft here. Welcome back to the channel. Uh, today I'm gonna talk about the gourds that I've been growing, uh, a little bit about the garden, and uh, how I plan on supporting my actual gourd, like bottle gourds, um, because they're getting really large and heavy, and how to actually fertilize the uh, gourd flowers as well. So let's get started. So here is my trellis, uh, and then I have my gourds, and then I have some plants here. Um, I have cabbage there. I have red burgundy or okra. I have my jalapeno and then I have sage in a couple places. And then in the very back I have black cobra peppers. I'll show you guys all of that later. But for now, let's talk about this. So this is a really large gourd and it's been putting a lot of pressure on the vines. Same with this one right here. The vine is, the main vine is right there. It comes up and it loops around and then it comes back down here. And so I want to put a, like, make a sling and have it supporting the bottom of the gourd and tie it up so that the vine actually is loose. Same with some of these. And then mostly this one right here. So let's get started with that. So I bought some pantyhose for like a netting. And so I'm going to use this to support my uh, gourds. Uh, so let's just wrap this around one of the gourds and pull it up and uh, see how this works. I'm going to cut it down. I have two things to hold on to to tie it up. So here it is now. There's a lot less stress on the vine right here, see? It's nice and loose here now. And the vine... And the vine up here can sit loosely also. See? Alright, so now I gotta work on this one here and I'll just cut to that when I'm done. All right, so this is what I have right now for this one. It took off all the stress on that vine right there. So now it's hanging up like this. So I have this one like this also, hung it up like that, and the stress on the vine right there is completely off now. So let's move on to fertilizing the gourds. So this right here is a female flower because it has the fruit there. And then I need to grab a male flower, like that one right there. It doesn't have the fruits. And then just sprinkle the, the pollen on the female one to fertilize it. So I usually cut it off about this length and then I peel back the petals, or the flower petals, and I just pop them off leaving just this. And you can see all the pollen in there. I just take that and I just shake it into the female flower. Just take that, place it right there. And then I usually just hold on to it like this and I just flick it. And then all the pollen just kind of falls through. And there you go. There you have it been pollinated. Not sure if you guys can see. I don't think you can see. And so one other thing that I do is I usually take a piece of the vines and I actually tie the flower piece up like this just to protect it from rain or anything else uh, to make sure that it stays fertilized. Or sometimes you can just kind of pinch it like this to keep it closed. I think that'll work for now. Otherwise with this one right here, this is a different one that I've tied already. See, you can see it right there, I tied it. And so that is good, I'll leave that as is. So here's my red burgundy okra. You've got one spear that's really really nice right here, but it's such a small plant. It's been eaten up by insects and stuff. 
We've got this one here. This one looks like it's flowered recently. And this is a flower. This is in a spear. This right here turns into a flower first and then it's pollinated and then gets turned into a spear like that. I've got my sage that I grew from seed, which looks really nice. Otherwise, this one right here, I bought at Walmart. It's doing really well too. I like the tree look. That's why I kind of trimmed all the leaves at the bottom to kind of get growth up at the top like this. Otherwise, this jalapeno I bought at Walmart. And this right here is my black cobra pepper. And it's been not growing very well. It's really small and doesn't have any fruit. And uh, I'm not sure if I'll ever even get any peppers this year. This right here is my black cobra pepper also. I decided to keep this one in a container in hopes that it might grow better. And so I topped this one a long time ago. And uh, that's why it branched out like this. And it looks like it's beginning to flower and possibly have some peppers, but I'm not sure. Um, I'm not entirely sure what it's lacking. I have really nice compost and uh, a mixture of like moss and a bunch of other stuff. And uh, I don't know what's going on. I'm just not really good with uh, plants. And so... So I'm just going to continue working on it and hopefully in the upcoming years I get better I suppose. Alright so for these two I'm just going to leave as is. There's not a whole lot of pressure on the vine so and because they're small also I think they're fine just left as is. I'm just really glad that the vine right here healed up and this one hasn't died um, and so yeah this is good. So one of the things that I've learned that I feel like might be useful for next year about growing gourds is my trellis. So the trellis is just pieces of wood that's put together and the uh, vines didn't climb this very well. Um, so next year I actually want to have, uh, want to add hardware cloth to it, like maybe half inch hardware cloth. Um, so that way the vines can get something to grab onto and actually get secure because all of this like the pieces of wood is really thick and so all these tendrils can't really wrap around it very well and so I think I'm going to try using hardware cloth next year and hopefully I can get uh, a better setup going with my gourds. Uh, but that's it for today's video. I appreciate you guys watching and uh, please hit that like button. It helps out the algorithm show this video to more people and uh, yeah take care. Peace out.